Okay, good evening and welcome to the March 17th, 2020 first ever virtual school committee meeting. Um, as we all get used to a new normal over the next several weeks, your school committee strives to maintain our public meeting format in as natural of a way as possible. Um, that's how we're coming to you tonight. Um, we are coming via a Zoom conference call that is being broadcast directly through WingCam. Due to the nature of remote participation, tonight's meeting will not include a live public comment period. At this time, members of the public who would like to submit comments to the school committee are encouraged to send these via email directly to the school committee secretary, Alfreda Canavan at acanavan at winchesterps.org. So before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to pause before we begin and just acknowledge the extraordinary action that the district took last week to ensure the health and well-being of Winchester residents, students, teachers, and families. As you will hear this evening from Dr. Evans, this was a decision made with expert advice and in collaboration with the school committee chair and the Department of Health for Winchester. COVID-19 and the effects of it on our schools will be the focus of most of our conversations this evening. As Brene Brown said, courage is contagious. A critical mass of brave leaders is the foundation of an intentionally courageous culture. I can think of no more brave and courageous staff and our teachers and administrators who have embraced the challenge of taking care of students that they are no longer with on a daily basis. Please know that they're working hard day in and day out to craft meaningful learning experiences, ways to connect with students and meet all of their needs. We're all in this together. Let's continue to move forward with all the courage and kindness that I know Winchester has to offer. We hope that we find you in your homes engaging in the recommended social and physical distancing for your children and families. And most of all, we hope we find you well. And with that, we are going to open our meeting this evening. And we are pleased to be able to have with us via Zoom, um, Evan Edler, who is our um, school committee representative from Winchester Public High School. Evan, would you like to give a report on the status of students and how everybody's feeling. Hi, um, so obviously we don't have our typical report because um, school has been canceled for the meantime, but um, right now students are mainly trying to, I think most of us are working pretty hard to uh, manage social distancing. So we've all been um, cooped up inside, starting to um, read, watch TV, people have been outside um, taking advantage of the fells and stuff, and that's just what I've seen um, of us making the best of the situation, I guess. Teachers have started reaching out um, for their plans for distance learning and um, at their own pace, which I think is supposed to start tomorrow, but you guys know that better than I do. Great. Does anyone have any questions for Evan? Great. Thanks for joining us, Evan. You are welcome to continue on and listen to the conversation this evening. Um, as I mentioned to uh, everyone assembled here, if you need to get up and leave, just please let us know before you do so that we can record um, whether you're present or not. Michelle, okay. I did have one question for Evan, if I could. Sure. We lose him. So Evan, uh, it's Chris Nixon checking in. Just curious, do you have a sense, are, are, are students seeing um, and appreciating the messaging that's coming from Dr. Evans and Principal Mahoney? I think so, yes. I think, um, obviously, I haven't been in touch with as many students because yep. of the situation, but judging from my friends, at least, I think people have been pretty much staying um, up to date with Mah Mr. Mahoney and um, Superintendent Evans's information. Um, not only reading Mr. Mahoney's emails in regards to how we'll go about distance learning, but also, um, Dr. Evans on her Twitter, I know that you've put out um, a couple of different articles and such that I definitely know students have been reading. That's great. I, I appreciate that. I, I want to just recognize um, both Principal Mahoney and Dr. Evans's efforts um, to communicate, not just through email, which is, of course, what a lot of us parents tend to fall on immediately, but through various social media platforms, especially important right now to be reaching everyone in the community. And Evan, I want to thank you for participating tonight. It means a lot to me. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Evan. Thanks for being here. Um, Thank you. We, we will move on to our agenda. The first thing on our agenda is a report and discussion item. It is an update on the Parkhurst elevator and lift project. Dr. Evans, oh, would you like to jump in? Happy to fill you in on this one. Um, 
Uh, Ellen Whittemore can uh, also weigh in as she's been um, working with Meg White uh, from the town engineering office um, to get this project started. Uh, wanted to update you, the last time we spoke, uh, we were disappointed to find that the bids came in high for the elevator and that we were short um, uh, on the fun funding that had been approved by town meeting for this project. As you know, this is a really important project so that we can uh, have additional classroom space available um, before Lynch School gets uh, rebuilt um, or renovated. And so we felt that the Parkhurst Elevator project was incredibly important. Uh, we went to the Capital Planning Committee to um, ask for consideration for additional funds. And then the following day on March 5th, uh, Ellen and I went to the Disability Access Commission. You might remember that the Disability Access Commission had been putting some funds aside to support this effort, um, but then we um, went in a different direction and asked for um, an allocation from town meeting when the total became higher than uh, what had initially been projected. Uh, Ellen and I spoke with the DAC and um, later that day, many members of the DAC came in toward Parkhurst. Um, we're able to see both floors. Um, we're able to see how accessible the building currently is. And we're actually quite pleased with its readiness to take on students and recognize that the elevator and lift project was a, an important step towards having full accessibility. So at, at their meeting, they voted unanimously to fund $82,000, which was the shortfall needed to be funded to award the project. Um, and uh, there remains a potential contingency liability of up to $90,000, which would need to be funded if we had to tap into it through some other funding source, either the school department budget or the finance committee transfer or a town meeting request. Um, but I think that uh, we were all pleased that the DAC supported this project and that we're able to move ahead with it and award the contract. Ellen, is there anything that I've forgotten on the elevator front? So the contract has been awarded and um, Meg White is uh, working to put together a pre-construction meeting um, with the general contractor, um, myself um, and Doesn't look like anybody has any questions on that. So I will um, continue on to um, what our, um, our action items for this evening. Obviously with the, um, with our COVID response and um, the canceling of school that has happened in the last week, there are uh, many moving parts. Many of those parts are changing day to day, sometimes hour to hour. And our uh, front office staff has been doing a great job trying to um, keep that all moving forward and still being able to reach kids and families, as I said when we started. Um, Dr. Evans, would you like to um, just address what some of those things are that you've been working on and share with the community what you're thinking going forward? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. And I'd be happy to take feedback or answer, answer any questions. And before I jump into um, uh, explain the steps that we've taken to address this uh, pandemic emergency. Um, I do want to thank um, the uh, not only the members of the central office, our leadership team, principals, teachers, support staff, custodians, food service, um, secretaries, clerks, uh, uh, yeah, uh, educational support professionals, every single person with whom we've interacted, the hundreds of people who work for the school department um, have selflessly and energetically approach this task together um, and, um, and really uh, are very committed to meeting the needs of our students. In addition, I've been incredibly impressed by the emergency response team planning and communication from the town side, uh, town manager Lisa Wong, um, the public safety uh, fire and police chiefs, um, the uh, DPW, particularly public health, who, uh, the very small but incredibly able public health department working to uh, try to keep us all safe as they track and uh, communicate around COVID-19. Um, tiny but a, mighty. Sorry? I said they're tiny but mighty. Tiny but mighty. They're actually doing uh, yeoman's work and people have been where everybody's been working 18 or 20 hours a day uh, for you know the last week or more um, trying to respond. Uh, I've been incredibly impressed by everyone. And lastly, school committee members have jumped in and taken on some of the tasks that would normally be the school department tasks. Um, and I wanna thank all of you for your endless support and hours of um, 
work to understand, communicate, advocate, um, it's, it's all been incredibly rewarding uh, and uh, I'm so proud. So what we've been doing, um, we've had uh, some key steps I think that have been important to keep the district moving forward. And the first step was we negotiated agreements with the Winchester Education Association units A, B, C, and D to continue services to students and families. Mm -hmm. Unlike some other districts where uh, uh, union agreements have not been reached, we're able to jump in uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, fully embrace distance learning uh, to support continued um, connections between teachers and their students uh, to, and to continue the work while we're remote of the district um, by all of the key uh, represented groups and folks on individual contracts. So when I finish this discussion after we uh, process kind of the background information. I'm hoping that we can briefly discuss the draft MOAs for the units uh, and that you will approve that so that we can um, continue to um, pay our employees for the work that they have done and will continue to do in the next three weeks. We have made provisions for most district employees to work remotely. Um, there are a few uh, exceptions to that, but as we're learning more about the importance of social distancing, uh, we're really um, glad that we've been able to uh, provision for technology for almost all employees who need it. It's been an um, incredibly helpful mode of communication uh, and um, and people are um, taking this responsibility seriously. I see action all day long on our uh, in internal lists where uh, teachers and other folks are working, sharing information, asking questions. So the remote work has continued. Uh, Jen can speak to this, um, but we've distributed um, uh, Chromebooks to all families who requested them. Uh, Jen, if you can just uh, weigh in on this one about how many of you have distributed at this point. Sure, so um, we've distributed over 50 at this point. Um, we have a few more that we will either give out tomorrow or deliver to the families that are in need. Um, John literally stocked uh, FedEx today to get our wireless hotspots. Um, FedEx has stopped delivering to school districts because they know we're all closed. So um, John went to the center and got our hotspots. So we've already made arrangements with those families to pick them up from us tomorrow or deliver them to them so that um, all families will be up and running on Wi-Fi and with the devices uh, by tomorrow when we launch our distance learning. So thanks for that, Jen. Um, we have a, what we call our all evaluators group. Um, that is anyone who supervises or evaluates, includes directors, coordinators, uh, principal central office folks. Um, they've met to launch the distance learning initiative and uh, we can share more about this as time goes on, but the provisions of the distance learning initiative um, really do provide layers of supports so that um, the um, supervisors and evaluators can coach and um, monitor the, the plans that the teachers are um, Im implementing with their students and um, we can coordinate and ensure equity across our five elementary schools, middle school and high school in terms of access, rigor, uh, variety, choice, um, movement, not just all screen based and so forth. And so it, as you might imagine in a district our size, uh, that is a tremendous effort to get up and running in a short period of time. And I think they've done an admirable job at it. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Ellen Whittemore, the Director of Operations and Finance, who's worked with Whitson's, our food service company, to provide no cost uh, lunch and breakfast to students in need, primarily our students eligible for free and reduced price lunch. Um, unlike other districts that took several days to get this up and running, um, our students starting Monday were able to participate in this. Um, and we're partnering with some community organizations, Winchester Got Lunch, the Coalition, uh, the, the um, Food Bank in uh, Woburn, um, and uh, Inca to uh, provide supplemental services for families who are starting to identify need beyond uh, school lunch and breakfast. Ellen, I don't know if you wanna jump in and share anything about how that's going. So we did get off to a little bit of a slower start yesterday. We distributed uh, 22 um, grab and go uh, breakfasts and 22 lunches. Um, today, those numbers were at 56 breakfasts and 59 lunches. Um, we had, uh, Dot Butler has been tremendous. Um, folks with Winchester's Got Lunch uh, delivered 16 meals yesterday, and they delivered another 46 meals today. So we are incredibly fortunate to have such great community support during this time for our families. 
Ellen, didn't they also distribute some food boxes? They did. So, um, did yep. So Social Concern, the food pantry for Moveern, um, has been on site um, every day and they reached out late Thursday um, to make arrangements to be on site with emergency food, bo food box boxes. Um, they distributed two yesterday and they distributed a handful of them today. They will be back tomorrow with, move, with more uh, boxes for families. They also have additional resources with them. Dot Butler um, has gift cards um, to Stop and Shop that she's been providing to families in need as well. Um, just an amazing, um, amazing opportunity to see everybody come together. Um, Ellen, could you just comment um, the 42 deliveries that you mentioned? Is that on top of the 56 grab and go lunches? No, no, that's an addition. Though that's part of the um, of the meals for, served. So just to show just how many um, of our kiddos are not able to come out to the high school, um, that Winchester's Got Lunch is able to um, to step up and deliver the meals and just leave them right on the front porches um, for for the for the kiddos to be able to have something to eat during the day. Great, thank you. And Ellen, um, did we previously um, provide breakfast to students? Yep, yeah, so we do, we have uh, previously provided a breakfast option for students who aren't free and reduced. Okay, thank you. So uh, next I'd like to commend um, the spe special outreach that we saw in, for certain vulnerable populations. You know, we have a number of students who um, are categorized as homeless and uh, some of them are not living in Winchester, but are transported back here under homeless status to be educated. So uh, principals uh, and special education personnel uh, reached out to uh, those families and made sure that they um, were uh, able to access uh, food and community support um, while we have a school closure. In addition, we have a large number of English learners um, and some of those overlap with the, the homeless students um, and so where necessary, we've provided additional translation services for some of the messages going home to be sure that uh, students uh, know what's going on and their families uh, are uh, well uh, versed in uh, the ever-changing information that is happening. So our English learner uh, teachers are um, have incredible relationships with their students and are uh, especially reaching out to them. In addition, uh, the counselors uh, and wellness staff members have identified some protocols for supporting students and families, especially as they may become anxious, depressed, or have other needs during this time. Uh, and they have worked out uh, some protocols for that and some uh, special outreach for counselors at each level. Um, and if there are any families who are in need, um, have uh, questions, uh, anxiety, concern over the coming a couple of weeks, I would encourage you first to reach out to the teacher, the, the building principal, and if you uh, are not able to be satisfied to uh, reach out directly to me and we will try to coordinate with community resources so that uh, everyone knows that even though we are socially separated, we are physically separated, our hearts are together, um, our efforts are uh, completely behind our families and students and we want um, everybody to feel comfortable um, in the next couple of weeks asking for help when needed. Um, the, uh, the other thing I think that's really um, been remarkable during this time is the level of cooperation between the town and school departments. Um, we were able through our sources to acquire some uh, hand sanitizer supplies that's on its way to share with the town and put in town spaces. Um, we've had conversations about voting and moving voting out of the schools to keep our students safe. Uh, that looks like that'll be a moot point at, uh, for uh, this voting uh, cycle, but the town clerk and the town manager have been incredibly responsive. Um, we were able to, to loan some laptops out to some town employees who uh, did not have them so that they could work remotely. Um, and we're really working hard to coordinate messaging uh, and communication with daily um, emergency operations, uh, remote meetings, they were in person to start, uh, and multiple uh, points of contact per day and very free sharing of information. And so I think we are well provisioned. None of us knows what is ahead, but we uh, have confidence now and have built the relationship so that we'll be able to solve these problems together. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about this before we talk about the MOAs. 
So if families find they need something as they go along, like once the distance learning comes out, if they said, oh, I didn't realize I'd need a laptop and a hotspot for my second grader, or do we still have those resources to provide? Will you continue to send out the information about that so that parents know where to obtain so, it? So Jen can weigh in on this. One thing I would say is that we've set up a distance learning protocol that um, uh, expects that teachers will um, reach out to families when they don't hear from the students. If they're not able to contact them via technology, um, then there's a protocol where the principal will follow up. And so any family who, who's not participating will have a direct contact from the school department. And then we can talk at that point about whether there's a technology barrier or a language barrier. <laughs> Want to weigh in? Sure. Um, just to answer the questions about can we still provide, of course, like I had quite a few people today that I've talked with that had missed the original survey that we are provisioning for and we'll continue to do that um, as those needs arise. And sometimes our best source is, you know, I heard from a school psychologist today, I heard from a teacher today, they've all been talking with their families and figuring out what they need. So sometimes that's more helpful than, you know, blanket emails from us, which are more informational than two-way conversations. Um. Judy, could you just comment, uh, you had mentioned um, that there's also been lots of communication from the town side, and could you just make a comment for our listeners on who might not know how to get notifications from the town side, like where they should go? Sure. Um, so the, the best source of information uh, where everything is being posted all in one place, including the school department communications, uh, is the COVID-19 link on the town website. So if you go to the town website, you can just click and get all the information. And there's a way that there's a way that you can get messages sent to you from the town via that website too. So I would just go to that website and get uh, the information that you need. Um, in terms of school department communication, obviously we use School Messenger. Um, I've done some voicemail um, uh, outreach uh, and also primarily email. Um, as you might imagine, some people are overwhelmed by email um, and don't always want to hear my voice on their phone, but uh, I'll only use that uh, phone message when it's something that's time sensitive or really important. Um, I would ask that um, parents and community members be really patient with us because there will be more email than usual, both from teachers and from a central office. And um, I actually got a, a, an email back today from a family who said, please don't apologize. We've been quarantined for 11 days and your emails are the highlight of our day. <laughs> And so you never know when you reach out who's going to be reading on the other end, but uh, that was gratifying to see. So um, really the, the most important sor source of information should be the town website where the town manager is uh, the information officer for the, for the town uh, and she will share information uh, to be sure that people don't get misinformation. Great, thank you so much. Sure. And if people are sure. comfortable with email and they call the same, like if I call my elementary school and I leave a message, I should expect somebody to call me back. That's still yes, the numbers all, to use. Right, all of the voicemails are um, being monitored several times a day um, and the clerical support staff will let the appro appropriate person know to return the call. Um, and so you can expect to be called in return if you um, are not called in return, uh, feel free to reach out via email or call uh, uh, the direct line for the school department and Frida will be sure that the message gets to the right person. Great, thank you. Chris? Yeah, Michelle, quick question I have for Jen and then just a general comment. Jen, you mentioned the 50-ish Chromebooks that were distributed. Are, are these predominantly uh, 9 through 12, uh, 6 through 8 that runs the gamut? They're almost all of our elementary kids because the 5 through 12 are on the BYOD. Mm -hmm. um, we had one case where an older kid had a broken Chromebook that we okay. replaced, but um, predominantly they're K through four. Great, thank you. You're um, and Yeah, and then I, I, Michelle and Judy, I just wanna make a comment along the lines of community support. Since the WinCam broadcast joined us a, a few minutes into our meeting tonight, I wanna thank the chair and the superintendent for their efforts to literally make this possible through WinCam. Um, who's literally knitting this all together through Zoom tonight. So uh, to Dave and the staff um, down on Swanton Street who are making this possible, I just wanted to say thank you. And I think it's a good model for the other town boards and commissions that still have work to do moving forward. So Michelle and Judy, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much.
Are we ready to move on to a discussion of the MOAs? Can I just ask a really quick question? Is there a way for us to have assessed um, that we're reaching everyone through email and the voicemail? Are there families who may not be accessing the information? I was thinking of our um, um, members of, of um, immigrant communities who might not have all of this set up, even though most of them are more technologically savvy than me. but um, we can't always be 100% sure, but is there something we're doing? Yes, so when when the teachers uh, sent their initial outreach um, uh, today, I think most of the teachers had, e had emailed or co contacted students or teams of teachers had today. Uh, they let them know that starting Wednesday, they can expect to get uh, regular communication either through Google Classroom or some other uh, uh, method. If the teachers don't hear back from families and students in terms of work production or participation in a Google chat or some other method, that we have a protocol where they're going to first contact the, um, try to contact the family by telephone and then contact the principal and then the counselor and so there'll be outreach. So about every 72 hours, um, we should be checking in with families to be sure that um, they're okay. If there's a reason why students are not participating because they're ill or because family members are ill, if they just let us know that, then we'll check back with them in a couple of days. Um, so one of the main concerns we had was to be sure students felt supported and that it's not all just one-way communication, that it is, um, in fact, a, a continuation of relationships that have already been established. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so in terms of our memorandum of agreement, so this is a little bit of a different protocol to review um, memorandum of agreement documents um, in open session. Uh, typically, these are discussed with school committee members as part of strategy related to negotiation. Um, but in this case, um, the uh, initial uh, negotiation was so collaborative with the WEA, the Winchester Education Association, um, and the uh, agreements about working conditions during the first three weeks of this shutdown, uh, if that's all it is, um, are so simple and straightforward that I thought we could uh, discuss them in open session um, if, if school committee members felt comfortable with that uh, so that we um, can show our shared commitment to our students through supporting these um, MOAs. So we have, uh, as you know, four represented groups. Some of them have a smaller number of members than others. The largest is obviously uh, our teachers group uh, in unit A. Um, and the MOA uh, talks about closure from March 16th through April 3rd um, and guidelines for remote work, including expectations for uh, what happens if unit A members become sick. Um, and even in the MOA, it says if a teacher has not heard from a student in 72 hours, the teacher should reach out to the parent or guardian. If the teacher does not hear back from the parent or guardian within 24 hours, we have a contact person and guidelines. And so it's right in the MOA. Um, for that follow through um, with unit A. Um, our other units are our special education supervisors. Um, conditions for them to work include expectations that they'll work, respond to emails, check voicemails, supervise and um, support and coach staff members around special education. Um, unit C uh, is um, clerical, a clerical group work, working on mutually assigned projects um, and, and the uh, education, uh, teaching assistance, education, educational support uh, professionals, um, also working to support classroom teachers. So we've got unit B, the clerical unit C, the um, unit D and unit A, four different MOAs, all with similar working conditions, slightly different expectations, but everybody working um, assigned hours during the work day, during the school day for the five days of the school week. Um, and really the recognition is that all of these people um, uh, are going to have a work product, will continue to be paid, um, will continue to be um, supporting our students. And so I'm looking for uh, any questions that you might have about these MOAs and their um, content, um, and then a vote to authorize um, the chair to sign on behalf of the committee. Should this closure extend longer than three weeks, we obviously will have to negotiate uh, either a continuance of this or some other um, MOA. It would be also helpful, um, I know Michelle will talk about this later in the meeting, for um, 
a member to be um, assigned by the committee to serve as the uh, negotiations or labor representative of the of the board to help uh, address any issues that might arise in the in the meantime and to negotiate um, on behalf of the committee uh, uh, continuation of this MOA or, uh, or additions to this MOA. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, uh, and uh, Lori is here to jump in as well. She has, um, uh, as HR, has been instrumental in working with unions, um, and so she can jump in and answer as, as well as I. So Michelle, I have a, just a quick question for Judy. If you could clarify for those watching tonight when these agreements sunset in April, and could you read those two very short uh, paragraphs at the end that just speak to this being a dynamic situation and things are subject to change? Sure. They um, they end at the end of the day on April 3rd with the assumption that Monday we will come back to work and work normal hours, hoping we will, not expecting necessarily that that will be the case, but right now they go through the period of the shutdown of the governor's um, order. And in the end, it says, the parties recognize that COVID-19 situation is an evolving situation and that this memorandum of agreement may need to be revised and revisited by the parties. If there is an applicable state or federal directive that conflicts in whole or in part with the provisions of this MOA, the applicable state or federal directive shall supersede the MOA. So um, basically, if there's a, a government order we um, uh, will, uh, this could become void um, or the government order will um, take in, into, a, into um, effect and not the provisions of this MOA necessarily. So I think we're fairly covered. It's a short MOA, just a three week MOA, but um, sets the expectations pretty clearly for a work product. So I had a, um, a question about, again, the sunsetting actually as well. Uh, I thought the governor's order was through the 7th of April. Um, I assume, is this, is that something that we could change on this or would that be easier to just have another MOA when we get somewhere between now and then only, only because this doesn't cover the entire extent that we know the governor's ordered? My so understanding actually, is the governor yeah. spoke, and it's actually the 6th. Is that right, Judy? So the 3rd would be the Friday of the previous business week? Well, if he yes. misspoke, then that's a moot point. <laughs> so I think the, the reason he misspoke was an understandable one. Uh, this, the shutdown started Tuesday instead of Monday, and he said for three weeks, and so people thought we would be coming back Tuesday. Um, and he clarified later to say we would be coming back Monday. Um, so as we get closer to that time, we'll certainly try to give parents and students some notice about that if we are in fact coming back on Monday. Um, I'm not optimistic that we'll be able to come back on Monday, but at this point, uh, this is just what the um, government closure dictates for us. Okay, thank you very much. So just to clarify that, um, because I also thought the return date was April 7th, we're saying it is actually April 6th, Monday. So a couple, so one thing we could decide as a district is to, is to come back on the 7th, the governor misspoke, and so we got a clarification from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education saying that schools should, at this point, um, come back on the 6th, but because there was, could be a lot of confusion about that, I haven't addressed that with parents at this point. And so um, the government order is through, really through April 3rd, would be the last day out, um, but we have told parents through that we'll be out through the 7th, and it may become a moot point. So. That's and why this as this illustrates, many things along this process are going to be rapidly changing and rapidly moving. Um, so I think that this MOA does a nice job of accounting for what we know right now and giving us the flexibility to change based on any other um, orders that are going to come down. Thank you. Fair enough. I had a question about um, uh, personnel like the lunch aides and all of those people. Are they being um, considered and taken care of? Are they still being paid? So Ellen can weigh in on um, the source of funding for the lunch aids because some of them are funded through the district and some are funded through Whitson's. Um, and so one of the things that we'll need to discuss, I think at the next meeting is uh, personnel who are funded through revolving accounts and the impact on our budget. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, Teaching assistants, the ESPs, um, uh, for the most part, uh, 
are funded through um, uh, sources that have already been encumbered or uh, have been provided for us through district funds. Um, there are a few categories of employees that are funded through revolving accounts. And if the source of revenue in these revolving accounts dries up, it could put us at a more a greater financial liability. But we've already accounted for and had um, allocated from either town or government, other government sources, the, the salaries for almost all of the personnel in the district. So continuing to pay them for the work that they're doing um, is, um, is not a financial hardship. So Ellen, I don't know if you want to speak to first the lunch and any other kind of revolving account. Um, and in line with that, Ellen, if I could just jump in and, and add um, like coaches and those staff. Mm -hmm. And does that mean like what happens to the money in there that paid for the athletic fees, the bus fees? So it's, it's a broader question. So we, um, my uh, group from uh, MASBO um, has reached out to uh, Jay Sullivan, the Associate Commissioner, um, who oversees school finance, and he um, responded about an hour ago that he's scheduling a, uh, a call with all of us either for tomorrow or Thursday morning. So I'll have m many more answers as far as what the greater impacts are um, in terms of the bus contract, um, refunding tuition payments for preschool that have already been made, um, athletics, how all of those things um, are going to be handled. Um, we re really were looking um, to for direction um, from Desi, um, you know, and Jay Sullivan regarding this. Um, in regards to the cafeteria workers, um, we have two um, groups. Um, one group is predominantly the elementary um, cat food service workers who are employed by the district. They will be uh, continuing to receive um, paychecks and Lori jump in um, if I misspeak here. Um, and then the folks that um, work secondary, um, the high school, middle school uh, food service workers predominantly are um, employed by Woodson's and the decision to continue um, paying them during this time is a decision that Woodson's corporate needs to make. Right. Um, we do have a very small skeleton crew um, that is working at the high school under the direction of Trina, uh, the food service director assigned to the district, um, who are preparing um, the, the breakfast and the lunches uh, for the grab and goes. Okay. And um, Michelle, if you need a volunteer for the negotiations that Judy just mentioned, I'm happy to volunteer. Thanks, Sina. Michelle, I have a question just to tag along with Zena's, um, and I have other questions about discretionary versus non-discretionary spending um, that maybe we can get to later once we get out of the MOA discussion. But with respect to our spring season coaches, um, whose pay schedules I think are in an appendix in the Unit A contract, they are paid by stipend. What's the status of their compensation given that we're not running athletics? Are they getting those stipends, Ellen or Judy? So to the best of my knowledge, uh, the first payment of their stipends, um, I do not believe has been released. I could be wrong. Lori, are you, do you know if the first wave of stipends have been released? Right. So at this point, no, they haven't. Um, the season hadn't started before all of this. Right. Um, so again, as the MOA state, we'll keep revisiting that throughout depending on if and when they can begin their season. But at this point in time, the uh, decision is they would not be compensated. And what is the status of spring sports? Has MIA given us any direction on that yet? Ellen, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, I believe the start date for the spring season has now been pushed to April 27th, I believe is what uh, was released earlier today. Yeah, it, the MIA Board of Directors just voted yesterday for the 27th and a completion of the regular season and tournament games by June 20th. But of course, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of assumptions wrapped into that. Correct. Right. We will, of course, save some uh, cost associated with athletic transportation, Correct. payment of um, game officials, et cetera. Um, and so if we're able to get the whole season in, albeit a shortened season, uh, it's my assumption that the athletic fees would stay in place and um, that coaches would be paid their full stipend. Um, but we could negotiate a prorated portion as well. So we'll have to talk about um, what seems fair. Uh, I know many of our coaches are also our teachers um, who rely heavily on these very modest, very modest stipends uh, to supplement their income. And they work countless hours supporting our athletes. And so um, we don't want to lose any good coaches um, because um, 
we uh, try to save um, a few hundred dollars on a stipend. So we, we want to do what's the right thing to do for our students and our coaches. Uh, one of the reasons we're trying to pay hourly workers for as long as possible is because we want to retain them. Uh, and we recognize that um, they have added tremendous value and provide great sports for our students. And so um, the agreements for some work product in exchange, um, I think can leave us uh, more satisfied. We're not just paying people to um, be on vacation. There's an expectation that there is work right. um, associated with uh, each of these uh, agreements. There is so, a Michelle, sick oh, sorry, go leave. Ahead. I was going to say there is a, a sick leave uh, uh, clause in there as well, isn't there, Judy? Yes. So, people can't see that. Right. So the um, <clears throat> the agreement is that members who are ill in the next three weeks will not, not be charged a sick day. Um, in the event that a member is ill, the member must inform their supervisor. Um, what we're trying to do is not penalize people for getting sick. Um, and there are some teachers who, for whatever reason, have had, um, don't have a lot of sick time built up. Uh, and we recognize that everyone in the community is likely uh, to become ill at some point. Um, we hope not, but that's a likelihood. So within the next three weeks, uh, we're not charging sick days. Thank you. Chris, did you have a question? I was gonna say, if and when you're ready for a motion, um, my sense is for at least the first motion on the MOA, we should do a roll call since it's collective bargaining, um, yep. but others may have questions. I actually think that any vote we take tonight should be a roll call vote just because of the nature of the way the meeting's being held as well. I think it's gonna be a little ambiguous if we're voting on something. Um, I agree. So anything that we vote on today, I would like to take as a roll call vote. I two two quick questions. Sure. One was regarding the athletics, since we were on that topic, the fees have not been collected yet, have they? Or at least not all of them, I would believe, correct? So yeah, that's, a good uh, user, question. that's a very good question. So user fees have been, um, they've already started uh, making the collection of them. Um, so there, some of them already have been uh, received by the district. Okay, so. So uh, if, if need be, those could be, depending on the status of the, um, other of the season, those could be refunded if need be. Okay, that's a thank you. That's very helpful. The second question is: Might we see any um, savings from? Might there be any discussion with our uh, bus contract about savings if we're not using gasoline? Obviously, they still have to pay their employees who still have a contract, right. but they might so, be willing to work with us. Right. So, in regards to yellow school bus transportation. That is going to be a topic for the conversation that we have with school finance and with Jay Sullivan. We are looking to Jay Sullivan for his guidance um, on yellow school bus transportation, um, out of district okay. tuition payments mm -hmm. and all of those things. However, if we are not running um, the buses for athletic transportation, there's no expectation, um, in my opinion, that we would be paying for runs for games that are not taking place. Okay, thank you. Just as a point of reference, those are two separate contracts now. Any other questions? Can, can I just a clarification? El, I'm glad Ellen just said what she did. We're certainly well aware we're shut down. I'm assuming all of our out of district placement sites are also similarly shut down. Is that not correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, just a quick question. So if the MOAs need to be um, renegotiated um, closer to the stop date of April 3rd, then when do you think that that will take place, that negotiation? So I think what we're hoping is uh, to have a clearer sense for the duration of the closure. Um, and should, should everything go swimmingly and we, we're back in school on April 6th or April 7th, uh, we wouldn't need to negotiate any further. Um, but I think that we need to make provisions for both um, a mid kind of uh, length closure and also a full school year closure. And there could be very different um, negotiations as part of each of those. I think we need to plan for both um, in the event that the worst case scenario happens and we're um, in closure for the rest of the school year. Uh, you know, and I, one of the things that does concern me is um, in a time that's very uncertain where there's a uh, widespread community illness, our teachers, their families will be ill. Um, even if we were able to open technically, there might be uh, such, a, such a widespread illness that we wouldn't be able to staff. 
Um, and so all of these things were in negotiations and discussion with the teachers union, uh, trying to anticipate Lori gets questions every day, special circumstances related to human resources. Um, and so I think that the negotiation uh, should begin uh, end of next week and start of the week the next week once we have more information about how long we're likely to be closed. But I'm open to suggestions. I mean, this we're we're finding our way through this uh, unknown territory as uh, each new um, bit of information comes our way. So if if uh, if you have ideas or suggestions, I'm wide open. I think we need to be prepared, but I think we also need to recognize that what we prepare for might change as we're preparing it. Right. So um, I don't think we can have contingency plans for everything. But um, I think beginning opening conversations again with the union perhaps towards the end of this week, beginning of next to see where we would go next seems reasonable to me. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Questions? Would anybody Do you like, like a motion, Michelle? I was just gonna say, would anyone like to make a motion to? So I'm happy to, to move that we authorize um, Michelle as chair of the Winchester School Committee to sign the memorandum of agreement for units A, B, C, and D on behalf of the committee as presented tonight to ensure continuity of services uh, for the period March 16th through April 3rd, 2020. Second. Can I, can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Michelle, are you able to sign this and get out of your house to actually sign it? I am able to do that. Thank you. Okay. So we're ready for roll call? Yep. So Frida, how do you want us to do this? Um, first yes, of all, may I, ask, may I ask who second, please? I, I think it was... Or she did. Zena, Zena Either did. one, Brian Zena. and Zena. Pick one. Okay. All right. Uh, just Baby. go. Just go. Go around because I see you when you show up. So. Okay. I sit next to Frida. I'll start. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. Okay. Thanks, Frida. Thank you. Thank and you. Michelle, can you or Judy speak to the other request for a motion on the regular weekly or biweekly pay for our non-union employees, some of whom are with us tonight on this virtual meeting? Sure. So uh, I just wanted to be sure that um, uh, everyone understood that our intent was to continue regular biweekly pay for all employees. Um, there are uh, some uh, employees who are not members of the union, and I just was looking for uh, vote to affirm your support that all of those um, non-union employees uh, should receive their regular, regular bi-weekly pay uh, through April 3rd. And Judy, would they be under the same kind of um, provisions as the unit A, B, C, and D contracts? Yes. So I'm happy to make that motion that we continue regular weekly or bi-weekly pay for the district's non-union employees for the period of March 16th through April 3rd, 2020. Second. All in favor. Do we do a roll call? Aye. I'll go first. Yep. Aye. 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 It's unanimous then, Frida, for that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being able to find a way to provide that to everyone, Judy, too. Well, I appreciate ask, your support. Can I ask a question along the lines of that? Um, are there issues with us signing warrants in order to get this, these bills paid? And would a motion, or do we need to have a motion to have the chair authorized to sign in the absence of a quorum of the committee signing those warrants? Ellen, you want to weigh in? I think at this time it would be prudent to have a vote um, designating the chair uh, to sign the warrants um, until such time as the full committee could sign. Um, I, I know that right now if we are doing business as usual and uh, preparing warrants on a weekly basis uh, for payment of invoices that are coming in. Any discussion of that? I would move that we authorize the chair um, to sign all warrants moving forward until such time as we can meet again in person as a committee. 
I second that. All in favor, same order. <laughs> I'll say aye. 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 Uh, Frida is there somewhere. So Frida, that was a unanimous vote for that as well. Yep. And then Michelle, may I make a request since we, we've, we've got the two motions and we voted, but we're still on the agenda item, which is COVID response. Um, yep. uh, if it's, if you'd rather we discuss this under superintendent report, I can hold my question, but Zena was beginning to bring up some questions that have been in my mind as well, um, more about how we run this railroad. So in my mind, I have questions about wanting to be sure we don't go, uh, we don't go, uh, we don't upset, uh, go underwater on the budget, uh, that we're not in a position to ask for additional funds, you know, through a special town meeting in the spring. So I've got questions about discretionary versus non-discretionary expenses, um, whether we should be encumbering certain accounts just purely on that basis and what our expectations are around revenue it has nothing to do with MOAs, but, you know, still important about, as I said, how we run the railroad. So is that something maybe that we talk about now or we do it under superintendent report? So uh, one of the things that, that Ellen and I um, would ask is that you hold those questions until we get more guidance from DESE. All okay. of the same areas that you're probably concerned about um, related to discretionary and non-discretionary um, spending, uh, payment to employees, not in union groups, et cetera. Um, the, um, there are some sources of funding that have been identified to support school districts through some of that. Um, and um, the guidance from the DESE is that for now they're asking us to pay everyone, um, but there may be some unemployment provisions, there may be uh, some additional grants, um, and there may be some additional guidance. We uh, uh, don't want to be an outlier. I think that um, most other districts, all of the other district superintendents with whom I've spoken are paying employees, uh, at least for the time being. Um, and I, we really don't have firm answers. We're really just identifying um, right now our uh, li potential liabilities and shortfalls and um, the status of all of the revolving accounts and the projected balances for funds we may not collect uh, that we would typically collect during these months. And so I'd ask that we hold till the next meeting to, for, to get to give Ellen um, and to give me a chance to kind of work through that and make some recommendations. But we welcome, if you think there's something we haven't thought of or that the conversations Ellen having with, with Masbo that they will, will not have thought of, could we ask that you submit questions to us in preparation for that meeting and then we'll um, put together some recommendations. All right, thank you, Judy. So it is also a good setup for something that I'd like to discuss with the committee going forward is um, that um, I identified earlier with Dr. Evans five areas that we may want to be um, keeping in a close eye on as part of this. And I would like to um, designate individual school committee members as point people on in those particular areas so that um, um, Dr. Evans and the administrative staff time can be used to be solving the problems and then we can just have one person communicating and then communicating with the committee about that. Um, so just like the, the um, committees and working groups that we set up at the beginning of each year when we transition um, to a new chair, I would like to designate a labor and contracts contact a um, building projects contract. We still have a building project going on currently at McCall. Um, we have the Parkhurst elevator that needs to go in. And um, as we'll talk about in a little bit, we still have a Lynch um, building project that we need to be keeping an eye on that may change in relation to some of these closures. Um, we just, a lot of it is unknown yet. So um, I would also like to designate um, somebody to be in touch with um, community affairs and the kind of things that Ellen was talking about with Winchester's Got Lunch and um, those organizations and then um, somebody for distance learning and town coordinator. Um, I heard Zena volunteer for um, labor and contracts so if she'd like to take that I'm happy to have her do that. Chris I would really like to see if you could would be willing to take um, building projects and, what a surprise, um, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to play everyone's strengths here. Brian, if you could um, take finance and, and work with Alan on anything related to the finance issues. 
Um, Karen, I would love it if you would take um, the community relations and any um, anything to do with those areas and working with the community and families. And um, I will take the distance learning and um, coordination with the town. Um, obviously still all working through the chair and um, trying to make sure that we are utilizing our staff time in the right way and giving them time and space to do their work too. Well, how does that feel to everyone? Sounds good. It sounds good like a good list, Michelle. I, I appreciate it. Can I ask one uh, one point? You, you mentioned the fact we do have a major project going on. Also, if the committee's not already aware, Marty Walsh has called for a moratorium on construction projects in Boston. So I'm curious if I can put Ellen on the spot. Um, have you even had time yet to have a discussion with the GC over at McCall? How do we stand in terms of staffing the project and project schedule? Um, are there discussions um, to be had about, you know, wrapping things up or mothballing the project for a period of time? Should there be more and more sort of protective measures put in place? So as of um, Friday, uh, there was an email that was uh, distributed through Vince, um, the uh, architect um, from the GC stating that um, with school not being in session, they were gonna actually be able to move inside and start some, start some of the additional interior work that they have to complete. Um, and that they were not anticipating at that time there being any significant changes to the calendar and timelines. We do have our Wednesday morning meeting tomorrow. Rather than being at the trailer, we are doing it remotely. So I will have more information after that meeting tomorrow. Um, during our call today um, with Lisa Wong, there was no indication um, that they were going to be um, any changes to um, construction schedules in town. Um, obviously, all that is subject to change, um, and I'll have a better idea tomorrow. I did talk to Meg White today briefly, um, this, late this afternoon, and she did not give me any indication that, um, that there was any negative news um, pertaining to um, McCall. And um, based upon an email I have from her about moving forward with Park First, I think that um, things right now are at least um, moving forward. Great. Thank you, Ellen. Certainly. Dr. Evans, did you have anything else to present on? our response not at this time okay um so that leads us um moves us on to a vote to approve um the student opportunity act response this is um the district's response to um the money that we have received from the state for um student improvement and um finding student needs um, we reviewed that at our last meeting and we just need to vote to approve that to allow Dr. Evans to submit that to the state. Dr. Evans, have you heard just out of curiosity, any changes to that timeline or? Um, There's a proposal to extend it by several weeks. Um, the only uh, remaining thing that uh, I was planning to do to report back to you was to code the responses to the surveys so that you could learn you sort of more at a more granular level what um, the response was from parents. We had several hundred responses. They were narrative responses. And so that's a lot uh, for narrative responses. I haven't had time given the events of the last couple of weeks to code um, the responses. I still plan to do so because they yielded a lot of interesting information. Um, but the vast majority were highly supportive of both goals and understood the need uh, to add the staff that we're planning to add um, for FY21. I can make the motion if you'd like. I move Everybody. to approve the Student Opportunity Act response. Second. All in favor. Chris? I'll go. Aye. 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 So that's a unanimous vote to um, move forward with that, Dr. Evans. Thank and, you. And at some point, obviously, this is not your highest priority today or tomorrow or the next day. Um, seeing those responses would be great. Uh, uh, but obviously, sure. it's no longer our highest priority. You know, if, if anyone is interested, I can uh, download it as a file and you can read them um, if you have a lot of time. They are all narrative responses, several hundred of them. But um, certainly, if uh, if you like to look at and sort data, um, there's, I can give it to you without identifying information. Um, and they all, uh, you can sort of sort it by level of where the students are coming from and what their parents are replying. So if anyone's interested, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll just uh, share the, um, 
respond downloaded responses with you. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to digging in and doing some coding. The fortunately, the uh, Student Opportunity Act response is a web based um, uh, response, and so I'll be able to do that remotely pretty easily. So thank you for your support on that. So the next item on our agenda is to discuss the um, town meeting warrant vote for the Lynch School Feasibility Study. Um, we did hear back from um, the board of uh, the select board and from the town manager's office that um, they do recommend a ban as the method of funding that. Um, I also attended uh, the select board meeting where they discussed the Lynch Feasibility Study and they appreciated the work that had been done to come up with the um, figure of 1.4 uh, million. Um, they did recommend that we go a little bit higher than that since many of the projects and things that we have been doing have been coming in higher than that townwide. Um, uh, you know, everything's coming in a little bit higher than we've expected it to be. So they recommended that we go with 1.5 million instead of 1.4. Um, did you have anything else to add to that, Ellen or Dr. Evans? So uh, obviously the decision tonight is um, for you to approve the submission for the town meeting warrant article. Given there's a lot of uncertainty, um, uncertainty about the economy, uncertainty about whether town meeting will be held and when, uh, uncertainty about the appropriate timing to ask for the funding for this feasibility study. My recommendation is that we proceed with submission of the warrant article. Um, if at the time town meeting happens, the school committee feels uh, that we want to withdraw that request and defer to the fall or to some later date, um, that would be appropriate. But my recommendation would be don't, um, don't make a decision today to take it off the spring town meeting warrant art, uh, uh, consideration um, because uh, you can always pull back on it, but you can't add it. So that's my recommendation. I would support 1.5. The 1.4, as I said, was a sort of a calculated number based on a median with uh, contingency and escalation. But um, it, particularly if we will um, be going out a little um, further in the distance in terms of starting this feasibility study, um, then 1.5 seems reasonable. I ask a documents question, Michelle. I'm looking at our packet online. I do see the memo um, from the town manager dated March 9th. Do we have, um, Michelle or Judy, hard language for the article that we're acting on tonight? So the language for the article is the same as what I had previously given to you. The only okay. difference is identifying the funding source. Very good. So Thank you. The funding source will just say ban now instead of um, uh, appropriate raise appropriate or borrow, you know, so. More, more specific funding source recommendation. Okay, okay. So in other words, you, you'd be willing to accept a motion to, um, pardon me, I'm pull it up. You'd be willing to accept a motion that we approve for the Springtown meeting, um, a warrant article for the Lynch School Feasibility Study as previously presented with a bond anticipation note identified as a funding source. Uh, and, and for 1.5 million. And for $1.5 million. Second. So I'll, I'll say that was my motion. <laughs> I heard a Brian second it. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Ready to vote? I say I'll aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the next thing on our agenda are just some um, votes to accept. We, um, it's nice to um, have some donations to be talking about this evening. Um, it reminds us just how um, giving our community is, um, not just through this crisis, but through the whole school year. Um, the first grant is uh, one from the Cummings Community Giving. It's $1,000 to Winchester High School to be used for our um, Best Buddies program. Um, Ellen, did you have anything you wanted to add to that one? Um, the Cummings Foundation has been exceptionally supportive of our school district and the thousand dollars to be used for um, the Best Buddies program at the high school is definitely money that um, the program is extremely grateful for and will be used um, for great opportunities for the students to participate in this program. I'm happy to move that the school committee accept with gratitude the $1,000 gift from the Cummings Community Giving as presented tonight. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Our next uh, donation is from the Winchester Sports Foundation, who has generously donated $12,495 for a 55 inch monitor, um, complete with a design layout and content uploaded um, from a company that will be able to display all of our um, Sports Hall of Fame um, inductees and uh, show current team schedules and information. Um, Ellen, anything else to add to this one? Also a very um, generous donation. Very generous donation. Um, the Sports Foundation has been, again, um, all of our community um, organizations have been exceptional partners to, um, to the school district as a whole. Um, Mr. Ria, the athletic director, is very excited about this uh, donation in particular um, as it gives students, um, current students, a chance to learn more about Hall of Fame inductees um, who they may not otherwise have the opportunity to learn about. Um, and it also will give um, a more of a focal point for um, the advertisement of sports schedules so everybody can know um, when teams are playing in athletic news. And where will this be installed in the high school, Ellen? Um, Mr. Ria is working to um, come up with a location that it will be the best location for it to be viewed. So he's working in conjunction with Mr. Mahoney on that. Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. Is this going to create a, this is, might be nothing, but is it going to create a burden on our technology uh, usage or electric usage? Anything like that? Our, our physical space? Given it's the cool. little, I just wondering. Yeah. So given the location of it, and that's a great question, I don't believe it will. I know that um, Mark spent quite a bit of time researching this. Um, so these are all questions that I will definitely go back and just make sure that there's a plan for it to be powered down when school's not in session and things like that. And that we're being, um, you know, conscious of our, um, of our footprint with this and that we're being very mindful of when we're using it. Thank you. And Michelle, I have a similarly uh, weedy question that Zena had. Um, the Winchester Sports Foundation memo says that this is going to be self-installed, but I would not be comfortable if that means that the Winchester Sports Foundation is installing this. I'd be looking to DPW or, you know, or, or Chris, who's our property manager out there to be coordinating that. Can somebody clarify what self-install means? So my understanding is, is that um, we would be installing it ourselves. I will uh, reach out to Mark and get um, definitive clarification on that, that it is not a sports foundation installation, that it is in fact a um, installation that will be done either in conjunction with DPW um, in the school department. Ellen, is this similar to the monitors that are already in our cafeteria? From what I've seen of it, yes. And from uh, demos that I have also seen at trade shows, yes. Okay. I move to accept with gratitude the $12,495 donation the Sports Foundation as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Karen, did I get you too? I think at the same time. Aye. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to suggest, unless anybody um, um, has a strong objection to this, that there have been some changes to our minutes that some of our um, members have made, and perhaps not everybody has been able to see those changes since we're not able to have them at the table the way we are um, with uh, when we meet live. So I'm just going to suggest that ju just to ensure that everybody has seen the minutes and the changes that approving these minutes until our next meeting. Can I just chime in with a quick question, Michelle? If it, sure. Did you get any questions or comments on the meeting on the 24th? I think that was our joint meeting with the select board. Those are really, really short minutes. And oh, if those are okay with true. everybody. No, that one is good to go. Um, I mean, just in, in the interest of keeping information yep. flowing, I'd be happy to make a motion that we approve the minutes of February 24th as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just a clarification, that's the Swim Winchester? Yes. Aye. Aye. Um, 
So the other ones, if anybody um, needs to access them from the public, are always available in draft minutes from um, Frida. So we're not holding anything up there in terms of um, the public being able to see those if they need to also. Um, so um, I think I did my chair report at the beginning, but again, I just want to thank everyone in the school district, school department, the town, the community, who has been working really hard over the past couple of days. It, um, it's just the beginning. And um, I don't want, um, I want everyone to remember that it's, it's, a, it's a long race, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So um, that we will continue the operations of the school district and continue to be able to have our public meetings hopefully this way while we're all practicing good social distancing um, and continue to improve our ability to be able to be in contact with the Winchester community, hopefully. Um, Dr. Evan, you're, did you have anything else to add? No, or I think to I've uh, shared all I have uh, to offer tonight. Okay. Um, a future agenda items, we have a pre-K-5 enrollment and space update. We are looking towards next year. Um, we will be discussing Morocco um, and any capital improvements um, that we are planned at that site. Um, we have school choice that we need to vote on and we need to have a discussion on fees. Um, the other thing before we discuss next meeting dates that I um, would like to talk to members about is how everybody is feeling about this schedule for meetings. We are going to have to add at least one more meeting in March. Um, to also do the superintendent's evaluation. Um, does anybody feel like we need to meet before March 30th? Is that a good time for us all to get back together again, pending any changes that would require us to get together sooner? That works for me, Michelle. March 30th on Monday? Mm-hmm. Are we talking about a morning meeting or an evening meeting? I think we would do an evening meeting. So does that work for everyone? Am I seeing yeses? Yes. Okay. Can yes. I, oh, go ahead, Zena. I was just gonna um, jump in and, and say my own gratitude. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of this team led by Dr. Evans, Dr. Elinema, Lori Kirby, and, and everybody. I just want to make sure you guys know how much all of your hard work and how much you've stepped up means to me. Um, the kind of leadership you've shown, the grace, all of it. It's just been breathtaking to see the speed at which you worked and, and how incredibly well you've done your job above and beyond anything anyone would have imagined in a crisis like this. Um, I am so grateful for you all and I hope you can, and Ellen, I can't even imagine how many hours you're putting in. Um, I hope you sh can share that message with our staff, all of them. It's amazing, our principals, our teachers, um, I've gotten emails from our teachers, so I'm beyond grateful and, um, Anything you guys need, even muffins, let me know. <laughs> no? <laughs> Thank you so much. much. <laughs> no. Long drive for muffins. Got cheese balls. For <laughs> muffins? I might order them from Sister Sweet. <laughs> uh, we're working on cheese balls right now. <laughs> Michelle, before we wrap up tonight, can you take a moment, given that we've got a period of time before our next meeting, can you circle back to those five assignments that you doled out in our meeting tonight and talk a little bit about how you envision us working with administration? Because if that's more sort of a one-to-one, -one, obviously we don't need to do that through a school committee meeting. But right. to Zena's point, um, there are some really high priorities and they change like hourly with our administration. So right. I appreciate your intent behind these as assignments because they're important, but I also don't want to distract from uh, the top priorities of our administrators. So can you just, uh, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but can you talk a little bit about how you see that uh, assignment working and that relationship working kind of between now and the next meeting? Sure, Chris. So um, I actually think that there are, um, well, labor and contracts will be um, pretty obvious as we move forward that 
um, we're going to need to discuss and reevaluate. So just like um, when we have bargaining and negotiating teams now, I view that Zena will be our appointed school committee. Sorry, I'll be ready to go in like two minutes, sorry. That's okay, Evan, thank you. Um, um, to be able to be part of those discussions and updates um, from Dr. Evans um, as those are happening. Um, and she will be able to bring back any information to the school committee and um, share that with us through, through that process. Um, building projects, I would hope that um, you would be able to keep in touch with Alan and um, keep on top of any issues and um, provide any assistance to Ellen that might be needed to um, take, take any of that, that she, any help that she would need and take her, your lead from her on any, um, anything to do with the McCall project, the elevator or the Lynch feasibility study and any work that needs to be done around that. Um, Finance, we're going to also be looking into issues, as Ellen said, around MASBO, and um, I would expect Brian then to also be the contact with Ellen um, regarding those issues. And if school committee members have questions, I'm going to ask that they direct them through the school committee representative liaison, because um, I think what the administration needs is less less emails in their inbox as well, as well as we're getting many emails from other people. So if, um, particularly, so the administration knows who they should, who their touch point is and who they can contact and then school committee members can contact that person for any additional information that they would need. Thank you, Bye. Michelle. I, I appreciate that. I, I, it just reminds me, I should have also shared with the committee, cap, last week's capital planning meeting was canceled. Also, tomorrow night's meeting has been canceled given uh, our difficulty. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with the chair, is um, when and if we meet or we make progress, I'll just prepare a memo um, that Frida can share with the committee and with administration, just on that a case-by-case -case basis. Yep, sounds great. I was going to ask, as, as of all of us, that if we each say we wanna talk about, ask a question about contracts and we email Zena, she probably, st she doesn't want a question just to be an intermediary, if we have questions, we should ask her those questions. She can sort of be collecting them. And then when she's talking about contracts, exactly. she can get those answers. She's not gonna be like, Zena, tell me what's happening. And she's gonna then go find it and get back to us. It's gonna be a sort of a, a, a bulk a a package as opposed to a, <laughs> a, a data stream. Uh, sure. That would be my imagination at least. I agree. <laughs> I completely the agree. the mother of two little ones who are home all the time now. <laughs> she goes for <laughs> finance too. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, what were you, um, I, did you have any more specifics on the community affairs? I don't if you had comments. So um, I would touch base with Ellen and see where she could use support on that and um, working with any of our community partners. Um, if I may, Michelle, uh, Karen may also wish to, um, to contact Jason um, about community um, partnerships that he has, especially around social and emotional. Uh, well-being and things uh, he's working on for students and family supports. Thanks, Ellen. Hi, Reed. Michelle. Can I, oh, I'm sorry. I was. Can I just <laughs> ask a question of Judy and Ellen and Lori and Jen? Is there anything that the committee can be doing to support you guys? Well, I can speak for myself, and I'll let Jen and, and Lori and Ellen weigh in. Uh, <laughs> you've been an incredible support. Michelle has been tireless and uh, and has been a great communicator thought partner. Um, and so, you know, just we feel your support. Um, if you can try to help us keep our inboxes uh, not so full with so many questions, um, uh, you know, periodically contact us and then try to um, share that information with parents who are very anxious, understandably. Um, that would be great. Um, we really appreciate your support. I don't know, Jen, Lori, or Ellen, anything you want to ask for? Uh, no, we also appreciate the support. I think we feel that and that's, we know you're getting way more questions than you're sending to us. So <laughs> we appreciate that. And, you know, just trying to help everyone understand the priorities. Like, you know, we need to get distance learning up and running. So that's the priority <laughs> now. And, and there are so many unknowns. We really, as my grandfather said, don't borrow trouble. Let's wait for the next step when it comes. So that's been very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and I would just say thank you. Your support makes all the difference because as we navigate all of this and as we all are very aware, it changes minute by minute. We're able to 
reach out to our staff to comfort them and let them know that clearly we are all in this together. So that just is everything as we, um, you know, work toward whatever we expect. I don't know, I guess I'm tired. Expect the <laughs> unexpected, but knowing that you're there with us makes all the difference. So thank you so much. Yeah, and if I can chime in, um, we really do appreciate, I mean, Michelle, your text messages offering a home cooked meal the other night was so touching and Michelle and Brian, both the offers of, of more Girl Scout cookies. Um, but I have to say just the, the team at, um, at Parkhurst, just, you know, if we're in it together and just, you know, knowing that, you know, Jen and Lori and Pam and Jason, that we're all in it together. Michelle, I think Evan has his hand raised. I don't know if you see the icon. I cannot. I'm so sorry. I did that by accident a little while ago. Um, <laughs> sorry for interrupting. Thanks earlier. for sorry. looking out for him, though. <laughs> Here, I will undo that now if I can. <laughs> it's okay, awesome. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Evan earns points for sticking with us for the whole meeting. I know, exactly. seriously. And if, I can, and if I can also just say, um, the PFA uh, from um, High School in McCall on, um, was it Thursday or Friday, brought up uh, a really nice lunch for everybody at Parkhurst with snacks, and it was just so thoughtful of everybody, you know, during this time to think of us as well. Appreciate that. We're happy to be on your team. <laughs> Do you want a motion to adjourn? I do. Okay, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, All in favor. It. Aye. 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 Unmute. Karen. <laughs> you got to unmute. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> I unmuted. Aye. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Winchester. And I hope everybody stays healthy and well. Thank Good you night, very everyone. much. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you, Wincam. Thank you, Wing Cam. Thank you, Thank you Wing Cam. Um, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye, Judy. Bye, Riri. <laughs> <laughs>